Hey guys, it's Johnny. I've talked a little bit about France on this channel, uh, a little bit about property, investing in French property, buying a property in France. I've talked a little bit about investing products in France, such as the PEA. I've also told you a horror story that I had with one of the bank accounts that I opened in France as well. But what I haven't really talked about and what I am gonna talk about today is my personal experience in France. How was it living in France? What was I doing in France? How did I end up there? And what did I like and dislike? So. Let's get right into the video. So let's start with how I ended up in France. So many of you who've watched the channel for a while know that I'm originally from the UK and that's essentially where this story begins. It begins during my first year uh, at university. I attended a talk at university about the possibility of studying abroad. Something that hadn't really crossed my mind, something I wasn't really thinking about and didn't particularly interest me before going to that talk. But the things that I heard in that talk, such as the opportunity to go to perhaps a university that's slightly better than your home country's university, the experience of living abroad and all the kind of stuff that comes with it, it actually made me change my mind and made me look at the possibility of studying abroad. So the options I had were to study abroad for a full year um, in the middle of my degree course um, and skip kind of the placement part and substitute it with a study abroad. Or I could have done it as one semester in my second year and have like an equivalent crossover of course credits. And that's ultimately what I opted for in the end, knowing that I wanted to do work placement and get professional experience in the middle of my university course. So as you might be able to imagine, the list of universities available to do one semester with kind of course credit uh, equivalency available at compared to the long list of universities available for a year out in the middle of the degree was much, much shorter. So that left me with a choice of studying in Slovenia, the Netherlands or France. And the study abroad semester was part of the Erasmus program, um, which is like the EU study abroad exchange program where you get grants and you get financing to go and study abroad, something the UK had access to whilst it was a member of the EU. Now the French university that I studied at particularly caught my eye because it was one of the Grand Ecoles, which is like one of the, the top most prestigious business schools uh, in France. I put that as my first choice and then Slovenia and the Netherlands behind it. And I got accepted into my first choice university, which was a university in Nantes. And so this is where the journey in France essentially started. So middle of my second year, I pack up my things, I get on a plane to Nantes. It's my first time living outside of the UK, visiting a country that's not Spain to go on holiday to, and the first time living alone away from my family as well. So a brand new experience. So that was an interesting three months, trying to get a grip with French language, uh, a new way of life, something very different, well, not very different, but you know, different enough to the UK for it to be uh, something new to me. So overall, it was a really good experience. I really tried my best to plug myself in, uh, learn a bit of French, uh, you know, get accustomed to the French way of life and make some French friends as well. And it ended up completely changing the direction of my life. So following that semester of study abroad, I went back to the UK to complete my work placement for a year, but I really wanted to go back to France and, and experience the country a little bit more and, and experience that life abroad a little bit more as well. So that ended up with me looking for an internship uh, abroad, a uh, three month internship that I ended up doing in a company in Paris. Uh, where I worked there for three months in business development, basically like account management and, and prospecting um, as an intern. And so that was a good experience for me as well. It was a chance to go back to France, live in the French capital as well. And at the same time, develop a bit of professional experience and get a little bit of money to support me with my living expenses, which were of course way above what I was getting for my internship at the time. Now it didn't really make a lot of sense from a financial perspective due to the really high cost of living in Paris. Um, I saw it as like a, a long-term investment in myself. Having like a little bit of money coming in um, from that internship, uh, which will offset some of those expenses and reduce how much money was going out. Um, and at the same time, getting a bit of professional experience, getting the opportunity to to network and, and you know, practice French in a, in a professional setting as well. Which is worth noting as well, um, because I was working in like a mainly English speaking team um, focused on the UK market at the time, you know, I was mainly working in English. So that was a, a good foot in the door into the, the French labor market for me. Um, something, you know, started in my native language. And whilst being in a French company, of course, the opportunity comes up where I got to speak French, practice with others, learn, etc. And so that experience for me pretty much cemented the idea that okay I really like France, I really like living in France, uh, I really want to you know have an international career, start my career overseas or at some point go overseas in my career and I hadn't set a timeline on it. Then whilst I was in France at that time during that internship was when the Brexit referendum happened. So of course that threw a spanner in the works and it really kicked me into gear in terms of okay if I want to make this happen 
I need to come up with a real plan. How am I gonna make this happen? And so the plan that I came up with was the following. So I finished my university in the UK, got my degree, and then essentially because of the profession I wanted to pursue, finance, um, and knowing what was required of people uh, looking to enter that field in France, which is typically a master's degree, some professional experience in France as well. I was looking at opportunities that would give me that um, as a UK national, which was not an easy task. But in the end, I found a double master's program where I would spend a semester studying in the UK and a semester studying in France. I would get two master's degrees from it, one from the UK and one from the French university. And there would be an internship required during that time as well. And so once I'd completed my semester in the UK, my semester in France took me to another business school uh, in Marseille. So I spent my semester in Marseille, actually ended up studying corporate finance, not the finance that I'm doing today, but still very useful to have, particularly if you want to get up to like the very, very top levels, um, like CFO level, then, you know, some knowledge of corporate finance can, can come in handy. Not saying that's something I necessarily want to do, but just so you know. Anyways, I spent my four months in Marseille, um, then ended up moving back to Paris for the same company that I did an original internship, this time doing another internship, uh, six months long, and in finance, which is of course the field that I wanted to go into. So after my four months in Marseille were up, I moved to Paris again, this time living in the western suburb of Suresnes, the first time I was living in the eastern suburb of Montreuil. And so for six months was essentially a financial controller intern in, in this company. And towards the end of my internship, very fortunately and uh, very good news for me, the company decided that they wanted to hire me on a permanent contract, a CDI, which is like gold dust in France. If you get a CDI, like a permanent contract, it's like you're pretty much set for, for a good while because permanent contracts in France can be very difficult to come by. So I was very, very happy to get that. And that was middle to end of 2018 when that was going on. And so I stayed in France one more year after that um, when I decided to move to Spain for a different professional opportunity, which has now led me to where I am today. So that's my story of how I ended up in France and where I lived in France. So as you've gathered, there's a lot of things that I liked about France, a lot of good things that happened to me. So I'm gonna start by telling you about the things that I really liked whilst I was living in France. As I say, this was my first experience living abroad outside the UK, and it wasn't drastically different from the UK, but it was different enough for it to draw me in, for me to see a different side of things and discover a new way of life and living and a different culture and learn a new language, of course, as well. And I think, you know, Know, anyone who's lived abroad or had the experience to to go to another country for however long um, can attest you know that you know seeing a different way of life a different way of doing things a new culture is definitely something that you know piques your attention now contrary to what a lot of people probably have as a preconceived idea and I find French people to be very pleasant and I say this with the caveat that you sometimes or often have to make a bit of an effort to break the ice. The French language plays a very important role in French culture and French people sometimes can feel a bit uncomfortable or even shy of trying to speak English or, or another language for that matter. So when they hear a foreigner, you know, making an effort to speak French, no matter how bad it is or how good it is, you know, they'll be much more willing to open up, to try and help you, to listen to you, and even try and speak in English if they see that you're really making the effort and you can't quite get there. And although you might not necessarily click at the very first interaction, if you really take the time, invest, develop in those relationships and really try to integrate in France, you can end up with some very, very good friendships and relationships um, with French people. Actually, some of my, my best friends today, uh, people I'd consider my best friends are people that I met in France uh, and our French people as well. And even saying that, in cities like Paris, which is very multicultural, you can find people from all over the world, whether it's people who've come from Africa, people from Asia, people from elsewhere in Europe, people from Latin America. You know, Paris is one big city where you can find pretty much every nationality and every kind of person. So there's loads of opportunities, particularly in these big cities uh, like Paris, to meet new people and, and to make friends and do stuff. And as a city as well, Paris is amazing. I really, really love the city. You know, the architecture and the city is astounding, it's beautiful. Um, you know, there's so many things to do, activities, you know, the nightlife in Paris is fantastic. You'll never be bored. There's always somewhere to go, something to see something to do. And not just Paris as well, you know, Paris is like the big city, the metropolis of France, but from a geographical perspective, like France has it all. It's got the big cities, but it's also got, you know, the mountains like the Alps, if you want to go skiing. It's got the beaches and the sunny weather in the south, like Marseille, like Nice, like Cannes. It's also got, you know, countryside and, and you know, beautiful green space as well. And places like Normandy, Brittany are great. Places like the French Basque country, like Biarritz, Pignon, 
you know, it's really got everything you could possibly want to see and do in one country. And all of that geography is really accessible really quickly as well. Let's take Paris to Marseille, for example. That's a seven to 800 kilometer trip on a high-speed TGV train. That journey will take you three and a half to four hours max. So you really see, you know, how quickly it is to get places. Paris to Lyon, for example, that's about 500 kilometers and that will take you about two hours on the high-speed train as well. If you want to fly, you know, you can do Paris to Lyon in about an hour and also to the south coast in about an hour from Paris as well. So you can see the transport to get you around the country, you know, it's widely available. And if you want to travel outside of France as well, you've got brilliant connections from Paris, whether it's Charles de Gaulle or Orly Airport, you can fly pretty much all over the world from the two. So I've flown to the likes of Dubai, I've flown to Sofia, I've flown to Guadeloupe in the Caribbean, I've flown around Europe from Paris, you know, the connections are really, really good. The last thing I loved about France was just the general quality of life, you know, you, you're in a big city City like Paris for example yes the pace of life is a little bit high paced but you know generally speaking you know the quality of food is good the social life is, is really good you know you can sit on a terrasse uh, and have like l'apéro which is like uh, you know a bit of bread with some ham with some cheese with some wine if you're lucky you're not even on a terrace you're on like a little little boat on the on the canal on the Seine or, or on the riverbanks it's difficult to put into words sometimes like these experiences and you just have to experience it for yourself but trust me it's one of the best things that I experience experienced whilst living in France, kind of the, the social aspect of life and the quality of life in general. Now those are the things I liked about living in France. Now I couldn't tell you all of that without telling you, you know, some of the challenges, some of the struggles, some of the things that I didn't like. And we'll start with, you know, what is not a surprise if you've watched any of my other videos is you know, French administration. Apologize in advance for the language, but there's honestly no other way to put this than it just being a complete show, honestly. Honestly, I would be filled with dread, with worry, with fear, with what's gonna go wrong this time, anytime an administrative task comes up. And this, from the very start of me arriving in France, from my study abroad semester in Nantes, up to the point of me leaving. For example, I had multiple difficulties opening bank accounts in France because of documentation, because of, you know, needing to prove salary, needing to prove income when I'm an intern, for example. I had difficulties applying for student benefits from like the CAF, uh, which is a good thing actually, you know, you get some subsidized living, but you know, that whole application actually took me, I don't know if it was like three years <laughs> to actually get from start to finish and actually see some money back. Good that I got it back in the end, but honestly, phew, that was a pain. Getting a residency card, something that I didn't necessarily need because our UK citizens were EU citizens at the time as well, but something to prove my residency status, you know. I went six months without seeing that, and if it wasn't for my then boss at the time who followed up with a contact in the prefecture, that thing would have been stuck. And then turns out, you know, my residency card was available when I decided to leave and move to Spain. So. What can I say? Oh, and in that residency card application as well, it went wrong because, you know, they gave me a list of documents that I should bring. You know, I had everything, checked off everything. And then all of a sudden she's like, ah, but you're missing, you know, a written declaration that you're gonna stay in France or something and missing like your bank statements. Not on the list of documents, not sure why you're asking for them. But yeah, that complicated things and ended up with a wild goose chase around Nanterre and printing off documents and then eventually got back and figured it out. But you get the idea. French administration is not for the faint-hearted. And when it comes to French administration as well, these institutions, whether it's the bank, whether it's the tax office, whether it's, you know, the prefecture, they're all open you know, standard working hours. So let's say 9 to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. And they close over lunchtime as well. So if you're working, you know, a standard office job and you're working standard office hours, good luck getting this stuff done. You're probably gonna need to take some time off work to get it done. Okay, so I'm in the editing process now, but I just remembered one more thing that I didn't talk about when I recorded the original video, and that's finding a place to live in France. This is a really, really difficult task as well. Even for French people, this can be a difficult task, but particularly if you're a foreigner, just because of the number of documents and number of asks there are from your side. First of all, you gotta factor in that the cost of living, particularly if it's a city like Paris, is very, very expensive. There's a whole load of documentation requested as part of the application process. And if you're a young person, you'll essentially be asked for a guarantee or someone who will basically agree to pay the rent owed if you for whatever reason stop paying the rent and often they're going to ask you for someone who's based in France or maybe best case scenario someone from 
within the EU. Now, when it comes to student accommodation, the universities are usually able to lend a hand when it comes to this. But if you're looking for private accommodation, then it can get particularly tricky. Now, the next thing I didn't particularly like is not the public transportation itself. The public transportation in cities like Paris, generally saying, you know, it wasn't the cleanest, but it gets you from A to B generally okay. What I didn't like was the rush hours on the trains and on the metros, because it's just literally like you're packed in like sardines. It's horrific. Yeah, we are like on the same every day like you put the sardine. Every day. There's no space to move. People get mad at one another. People push and shove. And if it's in the summer, then the air conditioning on the train's probably not working. The window's down and everybody is stood sweating next to each other as well. And if you're in the winter, then the window's probably closed. The heating's on full. Everyone's still packed next to each other with their coats on and so you're still sweating. So value for money and getting from A to B on the on the public transport networks in Paris, yes, that's okay. But it's a very stressful experience taking public transportation on certain lines on the metro, particularly line one, RER, A and B, um, probably a couple of others as well. Just, yeah, these are the ones that come to my mind right now. Um, particularly in the rush hours. And disruption to public transport and also national transport as well when there are strikes. I'm not gonna go into the whole whether striking over certain things is wrong or right in this video because that's not the point here. What I am gonna say is that when strikes happen, you know, the chaos and the disruption is pretty major and it causes significant problems. So if there are strikes and you live far out and you need to go into Paris um, to work, for example, then it can be, you know, a real problem getting there when there's, you know, two in every three trains that are scheduled to run running or when, you know, the streets are blocked with, you know, protesters or whatnot. You get the idea. And then the last point bothered me at the start. I got used to it by the time I left France, but for someone who's perhaps used to running errands or going to the supermarket or something late in the evening, you're not gonna be able to do that in France. Pretty much supermarkets close from about 8.30 p.m. And, and stores and shops as well. And in addition, unless you're living in somewhere like Paris, then supermarkets and some shops are most likely to be closed on Sunday as well. So on one hand, it's good, you know, people get their rest, you know, Sundays are generally a quiet day, but it does require you to do a bit of planning to, you know, reshuffle your life around, plan what errands you need to run, when you need to go to the supermarket, what food you need in, in time for Sunday in case, you know, so that you have enough for, for when the weekend comes and when the supermarkets are closed. So to conclude, I had a really positive experience living in France, some of the best years of my life without a doubt, and definitely that Erasmus semester in Nantes changed the entire course uh, that I had set out for my life. You know, I wouldn't be here in Spain right now if it wasn't for that, probably wouldn't be sat in front of this camera telling you about my experiences, if not for me taking that initial first step and going on an Erasmus semester. As I say, I've, I've met fantastic people. I've made some of my best friends from this time living in France. And just because I decided to move away uh, and now I live in Spain, that was the right move for me at the time. It doesn't mean that, you know, I was fed up with France and that I, I couldn't take it anymore. Quite the opposite. I really enjoyed living in France. And it was quite a bittersweet moment for me to say goodbye to it. You know, I was very excited to move on to the next chapter of my life. But at the same time, you know, I was closing another chapter that had been, you know, full of great experiences. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it's given you a little bit of insight into what life in France is like. Leave a comment and let me know what your experience in France has been like. And also let me know if you want to hear more stories from back in my time in France, if you want me to give my opinion on, on other things that are going on in France as well. So next time, I'll see you on the next one. And let's get this money.